So hi, it's me, Denny Daniel, and I'm here with Robin, Susan, Savannah, and uh, they went through. Uh, they came from millions of miles away, Florida, and they uh, and now they're going to go and uh, and do the box opening. I have three boxes over here. Now I do this like a forty-second street shell game, which I'm born and raised in New York, and remember where they had three shells, and there'd be a quarter under one of the shells, and then you would uh, mix it up, and you had to guess which one had the quarter, and you would win something. The only difference here is, I don't have three shells, there isn't a quarter under any of these boxes, and you win nothing, which ethically is like a New York shell game, if you think about it. Uh, but the similarity is this, I do mix them up. So this is me mixing up the boxes. Are you guys confused? Are you guys confused? Otherwise, I have to do this all day. Uh, no, she no, said no. Uh, you're confused. Yes. A, uh, you're not confused. <laughs> you miss your flight to Florida. <laughs> you're confused. That's a good answer. Uh, okay, so pick a box, any box. Which do you want to open? That one? You want that one? Sure. Excellent. And uh, here are your scalpels for opening the boxes. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After all that direction. Well, I was not sure what those are than an antique. <laughs> Just remember not to cut each okay. other, or yourselves, or the other people in the room. Sad. Gentle. Gentle. Do it to your side. Don't cut the top. Don't cut the top. A good idea might be to hold it like this. So you may want to hold it like that. So try that. Are you ready? Yeah, you're ready. Trying to find the end of the. I know. Sometimes it's not so. They wrap these things really well. But much bossier. What? Me? Yes. Just get the you said you're two years older. Careful, she's holding scissors. <laughs> Meantime, you want to be happy. You want to make it. You want to keep her happy. <laughs> I'm trying to be gentle. Can I open it? Yes, absolutely. Ah, so you open the films. Let's see which uh, titles you open. Whoa, this is really cool. You opened up George Millet's, which did Trip to the Moon. That is a really great. This looks like it's, a, it's an eight millimeter film of George Millet's. Uh, and let's see which one you opened. It's not Trip to the Moon, I'm pretty sure. This is a whole bunch. Something Voyage and um, Giant Magnifying Glass. Oh, it does have Trip to the Moon and Conquest of the Poles and then some sort of vo Voyage and... Oh, there's like extra stuff on this, but th that's really cool to open up that. And let's see what this is. Oh, this is another one, The Magic of Millais, also an 8 millimeter film, The Magic of Millais. He was kind of the, um, the wizard of filmmaking back in the early 1900s. If you know Trip to the Moon, with the moon getting its eye poked out that you see in like movies like Hugo, I think they spooked it and about his face. That's a really cool one to open. That's like Mine iconic. had like four different layers. <laughs> okay, so let's do yours first. Just proud. Right. So this is... It's actually an IQ test and he's conducting. I know, right? That's why it's doing <laughs> So this is Laurel and Hardy. My, uh, a Laurel and Hardy 16 millimeter film. I'm not sure which film. Savannah, help mommy. Stop it. Get off. Get off. Uh, most of them I've bought. Can you read? What's the name of that film? Uh, it's uh, Laurel and Hardy excerpt. Hardy yeah. Oh, it's an excerpt. Okay. Oh, this is this is a film that they were in. Um, I'll, I'll post it when I put, I'll put the name. But it's it's yeah, it's an excerpt from a film that isn't. It's like a cameo they did. Uh, for one for one of these films, and it's a very very it's early good. cameo. It's a very cool film. Oh my goodness, oh. And Black Hawk was kind go. of the uh, the Netflix of the time. RCA. There you go. Reference there. recording. Every heart. I can't read what it says. What does it say? Can you the yeah. Oh, this is a scene from Pick a Star, from 1937. <clears throat> That's very cool. What is this? I, I don't know yet. So that one. By Mac Oh, okay. So what this is, this is um, 
these are, you remember I told you about those record Fs? So in America, we didn't have to, sh we didn't have to record on bones and ribs because they sold you blank records. So this is someone's personal recording on one of these record Fs. So, the, you know, this is whatever his, you know, whatever it was. Um, oh, this is me born in Aston. Uh, she was, she was famous. She, I think she wrote a song for Elvis Presley. Oh, really? I think she wrote Hound Dog. When I was researching this, I was like, oh my God. I don't think anyone realizes this is the woman who wrote You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. I, I'm almost sure that was the one. I, I have to check, but I'm pretty sure that this is the woman who wrote that song, and this is like a personal recording she did I, on somebody's record. That, that's really cool. That's a very, very cool one. Did so, you order these? Um, most of the things I purchase, sometimes I get donations in the mail, and I'll open up a box and be like, I don't remember buying this. What is this? And it will be somebody that like either came here and donated something, or believe it or not, people on the internet that I buy stuff from will go to other antique shops, find something, and say, you know what, I'm not going to put this up on eBay or whatever, Etsy or something. I'm just going to mail it to you in the video. And I'm like, wow, that's so... So I've had people that I bought things from on eBay lose money because they end up sending me items because they're like, well, this would be cool, you know, and they're just such sweethearts. And some of those people became very good friends. They hunted me down, found out my phone number, and my one of my bartenders for the uh, speakeasies was actually uh, someone I bought stuff from on eBay. And she ended up, like, helping me out. And a lot of those people have become very, very close friends and have helped me out, including the guy who got me the Johnny Cash records. He actually was somebody I found up here uh, up there. And he found out who I was and was like, I like what you do, you teach kids. And I've gone to his house a thousand times. And he's constantly getting me stuff. So, kind of, I call it, like I said, I call it my mitzvah job. <laughs> so let's say bye to the world. Bye, world. Bye. And let's do the next bunny.